Hey, this is Caio. And this is Mike. From EssentialDeveloper.com. Tomato 19, and last time we finished the question presenter. So we removed the logic about formatting strings from the factory. And we noticed that we don't want to force the view to load here. So we should tackle this now. Yeah. Let's have a look at the tests. So our question view controller test, we are also forcing this here. So let's say is multiple selection boolean and the default is false. And I also want to pass this boolean here. And let me move this. So in our make SUT here now, we also need to pass is multiple selection true so we don't need this anymore or we can just move this here now just do one thing at a time this here so we don't need this anymore so let me just make sure that that still passes it's just a refactoring here okay is multiple selection is now correct and since we have is single selection here i think it should be more descriptive in those tests, we don't care about it. Cool. But I don't want to have this code here. So I'm going to add a, another test here. Let's say view did load with single selection configures table view. Right? That's it. So I want to create my SCT. I can even do this and make sure that assert false the table view allows multiple selection it should be false i need to give it is multiple selection here false let's have this with multiple selection true this should be true and this should fail well oh, it should we're... pass right now yeah we're... but i want to take this out of the setup because that shouldn't be here okay so we need to pass it here and remove it from here. So let's fix this now. This should be a boolean and we should have another private set and default is false. Now this should fail. Okay, so we're probably breaking something else. And here, yes. Okay, that's why I can't compile. So is multiple selection should be false for now, just so I can compile. Okay, and we have our failing tests, finally. So we should do this in VOD load, so everything is ready. We need to capture it. And mean? we need to capture it. So self dot is multiple selection. There is multiple selection. Yes. Should we rename it to allow multiple selection? Sure. It's better. Let's do this. And in here we can replace. Let me run this. Uh, yes, in here and in here. Run this and all right, that's what I need. So let's go back to the factory and let's get rid of this. In here, I don't want to test this anymore. I just want to test the controller. That's what I want. I don't need to force the view to load anymore. Same in here. I don't need to know about the table view in my factory, and I like that. Let me run this test. And it fails. Yes, because we're not setting the property. So let's fix that now. I stop forcing the view to load, and we don't even need this anymore. We can just return. Yeah. And we need to pass this property in here. So allows da, 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 this should be a boolean and we'll pass it here. True and here it should be false. Let's run this again. Perfect. We clean it a lot of the test. We don't need to force the view to load. And what's next? We need to think about the submit button. If it's a multiple answer, we're not going straight to the next question. So we need to think here. Should the factory create this button or should the navigation router? So I think both are valid. It could be in the factory or in the router. I think it should be in the router because 
The router knows about navigation controllers. Nothing in this factory tells that we are creating view controllers that will be added to a navigation controller. Mm. The factory just creates view controllers. It doesn't need to know about where it's going to be embedded. Yeah, I thought that the factory is a good place to put it, but after you told me about the navigation controller router, I agree. The router knows about navigation controller, so it knows how we should progress mm -hmm, to exactly. the next one. And how should it progress? With the navigation bar button. Yeah. Okay, let's do it. So, navigation controller router tests. When we present the controller with right callback. So, we have a callback here. When it's a single answer, single answer. That's what it is. Yeah. So, let me make some space here. Okay, so we are testing single answer. So, we should create a multiple answer. And I don't want this to be fired. As soon as I click it, I don't want to fire the callback. Mm -hmm. I want somehow wait until the button is pressed. So let's do this first. So multiple answer. And this should be false. Yeah, it should not progress. Yeah, it fails. So we need to have some logic in here. So switch question case single answer. I want to do this and case multiple answer. I I want to do the same, but I want to pass an empty block right now. Let's see if now it passes. It doesn't work. Well, we'll have the, the show at the end also, right? Oh, we have a, an extra show here. Yeah. Thank you. That will pass now. And it does. Okay, so we are not firing straight away. Let's rename this test. Present question for controller. Let's say answer callback progresses to the next question and answer callback does not progress to the next question. Cool. That's it. So now we need to add another test here. Multiple answer configures view controller with submit button. Okay. Have this here and let's stop. I don't need this here. What I want to is to check that my view controller has a right bar button right. Yeah. I don't need to fire this. I want to make sure that I'm configuring the view controller with my submit button. That's it. Oh, no, no. Okay. All right. And it fails, so let's do this now. And controller dot navigation item right bar button item equals bar button. Or we can just say button. I don't know why Xcode is not auto completing anymore. Oh, there you go. Okay. So what I want is with title. Yes. So submit. Mm, I don't like having this string here. <laughs> okay. We're gonna have to think about this later. Yeah. No target yet. Okay, something is wrong here. Oh, it needs to be multiple. My stub is wrong. Now it should pass. Okay, there it is. We have a submit button, but it doesn't do anything. It's always there also. We don't want that, right? We want a button activated only if we have selected something. Exactly. So it should be disabled by default. Yeah. Multiple answer, submit button, disabled is disabled when no answers and zero answer selected. Okay. Okay. I want to make sure that is enabled. False. That's it. And what I can do here as well is to fire the callback with an empty array and make sure that it's, it's still. Yeah. I can also add one that if I select something they should be enabled. We have all the tests here. It's kind of a integration test. <laughs> a little bit. It starts disabled. If I select something, it enables. If I deselect something, it should disable again. That's what it says. Yeah. Of course, we have a lot of assertions here and we can break it down later. But since we know what we want, it's nice to have all the assertions there instead of doing one thing at a time. Yeah. So now we need to think here. We have this callback and the callback has the selection. 
Yes. So we need to check this now. Let's say button dot is enabled is selection count is bigger than zero or not is empty. Yeah. Which one do you prefer? I think count bigger than zero is more descriptive. Okay, let's see if it makes our test pass. I don't like having the exclamation point negating a... Yeah, it, it makes you think. A boolean. Not is empty. Yeah. <laughs> uh huh. So we should start disabled because there's nothing selected as you start. Yes. So here I can just have button dot is enabled equals false. Okay. I want to test that it fires my callback when it's enabled. Yeah. So I need this setup here, just like that. Callback was fire false, true. So I need to enable it first. So this is going to enable my button. And then I need to make sure that it was fired like that. Multiple answer submit button fires callback or progresses to next question. So now we need to have a target and an action here. How can we fire this? So if we think about MVC, this is the view. Our model is the selection array. What do we lack? A controller. A controller. Right now the router is acting as a controller here, right? And this method here is acting as a controller. Yep. We could create a controller here for this button. Because that's the real MVC. Yep. The real MVC says that every view should have its controller. And a button is a view. That's the perfect MVC case here. MVC shouldn't be the entire screen. It can be. It definitely yeah. can be. But I get the most value of MVC when it's just a single view. Yeah. So let's create a submit button controller. Let's make it private. We don't need to expose it. Okay. And it needs to start with a button. And that's a UI bar button item. And it also starts with the, the closure. That's the callback. It needs a function update with new model and the model is an array of strings i think this can be generic also but yeah let's do what we want and then we make it generic mm -hmm. if needed okay so let's create the constructor it needs the button and it needs the call back and it's escaping because we are gonna capture the block and self dot button equals button and self dot callback equals callback so now we need to set ourselves as the target. So let's do this in a setup function. That should be private. So button dot target equals self and button dot action equals selector. Yep. Let's say fire callback. Yep. So we need a private fun fire callback. What is the problem here? Or it needs the OBJC. Yes, because the UI bar button IT API is a very old. It needs this kind of runtime behavior. Yeah. So that's fine. And here in the fire callback, we just call callback with model. So we need to have a private var model that it's an array of strings and it starts with empty. So update model is gonna store the model. It's gonna get some state. Okay, we need to change the button state. So let's create an update button state so let's create another private function update button state that pretty much does this and as we set up the first thing it needs to do is to update the button state i think that's it let's create our controller here button controller before button get rid of these names here yeah with button and callback so we don't need this anymore and inside the block we just update with our new model let's see and it doesn't work is our setup correct we have a view controller and we stub it and oh we're not firing the button okay tomato is done let's fix this first yes what we need to do is to press the button we need to get the button here we don't need to assert it's enabled or perform 
selector or main thread. Yes, so the selector is button dot action new wait until done. Yes. Okay. And hopefully it's gonna fire the color. Okay. <laughs> it was a little expected to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> what is it wrong with you? Some sort of objective seism. Uh -huh. Trouble ahead. I like that. <laughs> Trouble ahead. Okay, maybe we should fix this in the next episode. Okay. And you don't want to miss that. Almost done. <laughs>